This time on TV Reviews, we're going to be looking at HBO's series, Rome. Rome was a historical drama series that came out on HBO between 2005 and 2007 before getting cancelled right after the second season aired and follows the events of the Roman Republic from Caesar's return from Gaul all the way to the death of Cleopatra and Mark Antony while also focusing on the lives of the plebeians and the patricians. Guys, I've been really excited to talk about Rome on this channel because this is a series that I'm already very familiar with. I've watched this show a couple times before, but never for the purposes of reviewing it on this channel. So it was really exciting finally getting back into watching this. And guys, this is one of my favorite shows of all time. I absolutely love this show, and a lot of that has to do with just the historical authenticity of this series, as well as the characters and just the large budget that they did to really bring Rome to life. For those of you that don't know, Rome was a HBO series that was a joint production between them as well as the BBC and was trying to be more of an authentic as well as darker version of what we had seen of Rome in the big budget epics of the 1950s. And this was meant to ground it in a reality while also trying to be as historically accurate as possible. Now, when you try to be historically accurate, you never can really fulfill on that promise. This show does have its share of inaccuracies. Sometimes it's for ignoring it completely because of the time frame of the show, as well as just the fact that there are so many characters in the show already that just adding more would just be too much and some little things that just can be left to the side. But for the most part, this is a historically authentic show that is really good and really entertaining and really informative as well. Now, something I do love about this show is how it focuses mainly on the plebeians, focusing on our two main characters, Lucius Varinus and Titus Polo, played by Kevin McKidd and Ray Stevenson alike. And Guys, these are some of my favorite characters ever put to the small screen. These are one of my favorite TV characters of all time. I love these guys, and I love how they start out really hating each other and just not getting along with each other to eventually, by the end of the series, becoming best friends and basically brothers. And it's a very beautiful relationship that feels authentic and the way it unfolds is just beautifully told. Their story is so good and it's so sad that these people are completely fake. Ray Stevenson and Kevin McKidd's characters are not factual at all. In fact, they never existed at all, but Oh well, but something I do love that their characters are used for are used for ways of showing Rome's history. Like they put them in these historical events to kind of be the perspective of the plebs, which I think is a really cool and unique idea that they do. We also get to see how their lives are. It's definitely, definitely worse than um, those of the patricians such as um, Octavian, Atia, Mark Antony, and uh, Julius Caesar himself, which is they're basically living in luxury while these are just trying to get by. Now, everything you've heard about this show with how expensive it was, you truly see that put on the screen here. At the time, this was the most expensive show ever produced until Game of Thrones came around. And even to this day, in many ways, Game of Thrones looks cheaper than Rome does. When you look at Rome and look at the sets, you understand why the show probably got canceled because they built an entire Roman forum, which is just so beautiful to look at. It looks amazing. It looks authentic. It's bright. It's colorful. It's dirty. It's grimy. It's ugly. It's amazing to look at. And just along with all the interior sets and other exterior sets, this is an extremely authentic but very expensive show, you can tell. And 
I just love every second of it. I love the politics, especially when it comes to the patricians, which I haven't talked about, such as with um, Mark Antony and Cleopatra and Julius Caesar and Atia and Octavian. All their stuff is just really interesting and where a lot of the historical accuracies come from. And it's really cool seeing the power plays between characters and how they hate each other, how they love each other, and just how they all come together. And it's just really cool. Rome feels so authentic when you're watching it. If I had any complaints with this series, it would be the fact that we didn't get more than two seasons. The series was originally supposed to be about five seasons. You would have the first season focusing on the death of Julius Caesar. You would have the second being the death of Brutus. Then you would have seasons three and four focusing with Mark Antony and Cleopatra in Egypt and the fifth season finally dealing with the Messiah in Palestine, which I thought would have been really cool, but they don't really get to get there, but they do try to get there in this second season. So about halfway through writing the second season, the creator Bruno Heller knew that the series was going to get canceled, and so what he did was kind of stretch the storyline by fitting it all into one season. So in season two, we get a combination of what the second season was going to be and what three and four was going to be, while also hinting at eventually a fifth season with the Jews. And sometimes this really makes the second season feel a lot more cluttered, especially when you get to the last two episodes where it really skips years and years, and you really do feel it in those last two episodes. However, the writing still remains consistent with the characters. We see them progress normally how they should, and it really doesn't feel like a disappointment, such as when Game of Thrones would skip a bunch of time, and it would feel disappointing and feel rushed. This doesn't specifically feel rushed because they do a lot of time jumps already throughout the series. It's just this is a really huge jump and it's kind of sad that the series ended this way because there have been talks of a movie being released but there hasn't been any talk about the script since about 2011 so I feel like unlike Deadwood this probably is never going to actually get a movie and this is the ending of this sad um, series that we're going to get. I say sad because it ends where it shouldn't have. It should have continued on for at least three more seasons and that's really sad about this show but overall guys this is a fantastic beautiful, authentic, and fun show to watch that is both educational as well as get your itch on for some gruesome, violent Roman action and um, storylines that are really interesting and complex. And Rome is very complex, and this show really shows that. In terms of both the seasons, I love the first season. In fact, I think the finale of that season is one of the best finales of all time. But honestly, a lot of people will disagree with me with this, but I actually love the second season more than the first season. I think it develops the characters even more, and even though it changes a lot of things, um, it changes some of the history around, as well as crunches things down to make time for such things as Mark Antony and Cleopatra. It still feels so authentic, so good, and I love the writing with this series. I love these characters, and when we finally have to say farewell to them, I really do miss them. Guys, if you haven't watched Rome, go ahead and do yourself a favor and go watch it right now. It's a great series. You'll love it, and by the end, even though you'll love it, you will be sad that this series didn't get the proper five seasons that it should have. I'm going to give Rome a 9 out of 10. Well guys, I want to thank you for watching this review. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next review.